I started training in 2000, right? I used to have a friend. Uh, he used to be always invite me to train, but I was on the college and stuff like that. And then he used to have a gym already. And then he always invite me, come on, you're quite big, you know, maybe you can do some techniques, some jujis. I said, I'm not interested. But I started to watch, like, I think everybody else will watch the Master Royce Grace, you know, in 1993, I'm old you now, 1993. And I got a little bit interested, but it's still not my kind of thing. And one day, uh, he moved his school to next to my house. And then he was, I was walking, and he, hey, Louis, remember, I just moved my jeans here, you know what I mean? So you, you check it out, you come to check it out. I said, right, I didn't have a spare time, I have free time, so I went there, and then he very smart, so what happened? They say, Paul Luz, I'm gonna start to show you some self-defenses, and you can do anything to escape. So what happened if somebody else, so he grabbed him in the head lock? And they say, I'm not a violence, I never be a violence guy. I say, I don't know, I bite you. No, you know, you do that, you do that. So he started to show me a little bit some self-defense techniques, and I didn't have a clue how to escape. And if somebody else will grab you from behind, if somebody else will come here, you know what I mean? It's not about punches and kicks, but if somebody else will put you on the floor. So he started to, you know what I mean, calling my attention about. And they say, I give you three weeks, you know, free trial. And then I start training, I start, and when I, that's the thing, that's I like the good environment in the gym. Because I didn't know when I arrived in the gym, few friends of mine already was training. I said, hey, you here, you here. And that's, that I start. In Rio de Janeiro, in Brazil, yeah. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, from Brazil. And uh, a small community, you know, called Jacarepaguá, in Rio de Janeiro. Then, when I realized I was training one month, so he gave me just like one week free, just for me to try. And then I also show a lot of self-defense, so I start to get really, really, you know, exciting. And I start to understand as well what's, what uh, was happening in the UFC. Because at the time I used to watch UFC, UFC like in 1993, it's like UFC 1, UFC 2. We could see the top, the guys top, but I didn't know how, what exactly was happening. And when I start training, I start to understand what happened. And when I realized that I was going like almost every day, and uh, at time I used to have like a very stressful work. It's like I used to work like a mechanic, mecha mechanic, a technical mechanic, yeah. And I used to work offshore. It's like stay like 15 days inside the sea, and Jeff. And sometimes in small company, sometimes I was really, really stressed. My day was very stressed. But go to jiu-jitsu to train a little bit. So I, you know, start like lose, relax a bit. I never like work out. I never things like this. And I start to see myself arrive in the gym and leave the gym. So I used to arrive very stressed, very like, and then I left the gym it's like, you know, calm. The problem is still there, but my head was really cool to, to, you know, to sort out. And then things start to, you know, and the when I start to miss, so I could make the class because it work, stuff like that. I used to miss it. I used to say, oh man, today my days no, you know what I mean? I miss something. And they come the competition thing. Uh, competition. They go, hey, you start doing well. Maybe you, you know, maybe you do okay in the competition. What do you think? So I went to watch some comps. I, I like the vibe. I like, you know, see the. I say, well, I try. I try my first comp and then <laughs> did it work well. <laughs> I lost the first bat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I don't get submission, but the guy like mopped the match with me that I felt like. I remember I locked a triangle, wrong, <laughs> and then after that, he passed my guard the mountain. I just, just survived. And then, but you know, it, it's hurt my ego a bit. It's like, you know, I want to feel I want to cry, you know. And then I train more, I say, no, now I want to do well. Now I have to do again. And then I, I did again my second competition, then I won. So, in Couple months, like in four months, I felt I, I had the feeling of the lost, you know, and the win is at the same time. And and I didn't stop, you know, I didn't stop. And uh, I was just experiencing. Wanna have? I wanna be good. That's the thing. I never wanna. I wanna leave it from the sport, but I wanna be good. I wanna be re really good. And then I start blue belt, compete around, around Rio de Janeiro, compete, compete. 
but purple belt I have the shock because I start to do well local I used to, because I still work I still work and train at night uh, as a purple belt because the blue I start to compete a lot in local I start doing well in local and uh, I start to try jump myself on the big comps it's like uh, the mundial the worlds the not Brazilian nationals and then I got my purple belt I say well that's what I want. I used to follow a lot, I used to buy a lot of magazines. I start to become like addictive. You know, man. It's like watching watch videos, watch Roger Grace's highlights, Jacare's highlights, buy magazines, and I used to watch all the fights. And then when I was Papa Belt, I start to I fought with like two two or four big names. At the time they used to be purple, but they used to be next level. I used to be purple, but I used to like it. Don't get me wrong, but work all day, go to the gym 7 o'clock, train, even two hours. But when I went to purple, I started to do big comps. I started to face the guys that just wake up, drill, work out, and train again. So I fought with André Galvão when he was purple belt. And then he gave me the shock a bit, you know. I, I managed to, to, I think, just swap him and just after that, I didn't, I didn't even see the call of his belt. <laughs> and I just, whoa. And I start to wait, what are these guys doing? What's the difference between me, you know, me, pup, and these guys are young, but they just leave from the sport. They don't do nothing else. Then I fought with Romulo Barral in the National Brazil. I know the monsters, you know. And that, then I start to follow these guys a bit, see, it's, it's not just training, because I don't know, I thought at some point, everybody has the same, uh, the same, the same lifestyle work or studying because I used to have a lot of friends who used to do uni during the day and you train at night so I thought everybody was like this a bit Every, and I start to realize this is no have guys could just live full time in front of the jiu-jitsu and that starts like I say oh, I think one day I wanna I wanna do I, I like you know even I, even I lost I got beat by these guys but I beat I lost like for example I lost from the Galvão and I sat down and you just watch him or his way to the vision then he just murdered everybody I said oh my god I want to be like this and I was watching Jacare as a brow belt you know and I started like what these guys doing you know they do strength condition they do and I just prepare myself to one day just leave it from the sport you know can I ask you um, at, at what point during the journey you, uh, you made that decision to just go back to uh, Papa Belt I make a decision but I, I still know have how to support myself financially because <laughs> I didn't have too many sponsorships so I have to keep working but when I got brow belt I had I had to make a decision you know when I was like my second year for brow belt 2006 I say oh I try now or I'm gonna be too late because I was I, I, I was already like 20 27 27 to 28 years old and you that's why I really like the vibe. Teammates, it's very important because my friends start to see my journey. Then they say, Luz, you can't do it. You have to try, but try now, because otherwise you're going to be on your company old and you say, well, oh, I could try, you know what I mean? Leave at the least if it doesn't work. You can, you can, at the least you try. And my dad as well supports me a lot. Like, you know, man, he gave me, come on, you know. Well, it's quite risk because they don't understand. My family, made, but they didn't understand it too much. But they say, well, it's quite risk what you do. But if you love, if you believe, if you want to work, at the least work hard. And then uh, try. And then I jumped. So what I did, uh, the first thing I did, I got a passport. When I was working, I got a passport. I quit all my bills <laughs> quit all my bills I got my own flat and then when I brought belt uh, my teacher uh, Joy Joelson Souza he gave me a chance he gave me opportunity to start teacher two times on his gym you know I mean it's like you know Tuesdays and Thursdays he said look so I have I have available time you know the math is empty if you want to put a class there you know I mean, a lot of guys like you they train if you are aware you know I mean so I think they're gonna happen 
you're gonna get experience as well. I said, well, everything's starting, you know, in the right direction, you know, my teacher giving me opportunity. I'm thinking about quitting job. My friends, my family is gonna support me. So that 2006, my second year as a brow belt, I just, uh, I decided to quit my job. Even my boss told me now, because my boss, like, he has, like, his nephew, he's a black belt to jiu-jitsu. So his nephew used to be brow belt. And my boss was like, he understand, he understood what was happening to me. I was like, I just, I just, I wasn't there. I just was in the, in the jiu-jitsu mode. He said, it's hard, Luz, it's hard. Eric, we give a lot of support to Eric. That was my, uh, his nephew. Eric is still hard to survive, but what we do? What I gonna do to you? I used to be, I used to be like, a, I used to work in the, I used to work in the company for 10 years, 10 years. And I have a really good relationship with my boss, a lot, I learn a lot with him. So he say, you go there, you try, because I can't see in your eyes, you try this jiu-jitsu lifestyle, I don't know what you want to do, I leave it from the spot. I do all the deals to the job. But after six months or three months, whatever happened, if it didn't work, I give you a job back, but obviously I'm not gonna give you the same salary. I'm not gonna put you in the same position, but your job is gonna be here. I always have space for you here, but then you try, you know what I mean? You, you know, I like you, you know, we, I know we know each other for 10 years, so you have a try. Uh, you can call me anytime. I'm gonna give, you know, I will offer the job for you back again. And then I never come back, I never call him back. It's my mind was like, I think I'm in the right direction. I think I'm in the right direction. I think everything, you know, it's, it, it's working. It needs to happen. If it's like, oh, but it's going to be struggle. Well, I'm not going to have a salary every end of the month. But at the same time, I used to put on my, my head on, on the pillow and just say, some things, a lot of, a lot of things really happening to me try. You know, my friends, my work now, you know, I, you know, and my teacher gave him opportunity to start teaching his school. You know, I said, I think it's the right time. And at the same time, I, I keep looking to these guys, you know, it's, look at Jacare, look at these guys, say, I have to try, man, I have to try, you know, man. And then we have like, I'm from Favela, right? I'm from Rocinha, in Rio de Janeiro. And you have a good guy, he's sparring, he's sparring us from Favela a lot. It's like Fernando Tereri. You hear about you, you know, man, Tereri. And he was from the community, and he shined for the world. You know, so he give like a, a, a door like everybody can do from there. Because at the time Jiu Jitsu used to be a little bit like from the middle class. You know, and uh, he said, well, I'm gonna try. And then I jump, I start to teach it Tuesday to Thursday. And the next minute I start to train more in Gracie Barra. I used to train in Gracie Barra combat team with Professor Gordo. He gave me opportunities as well. He said, listen, oh, you can train here, but you need to help them in MMA fighters. But that's the what I need, you know. I need to train with professional guys there, you know. Uh, helping me so much because to do I, I used to have access to the gym so I used to train like wrestling boxing buggy that was my main thing plus workout as well in the gym I used to have all the all the all the facilities that okay, you could use you know and they helped me out you know did you already did I'm so happy for my team now I'm, I set up my team since 2014 yeah I used to work for Gracie Barra I used to be from Gracie Barra but I started I left Gracie Barra and just set up my own team in 2014 but the guys used to train for me just to keep and then uh, I just opened this place you know uh, where that's the third last third class you know yeah and at the time I know and the time uh, I will always uh, had like a mat but used to have another things involved too, you know I mean now that's my well, that was basically one of my dreams just to have just like full-time Brazilian jiu-jitsu school you know because I always have something Used to have oh I used to have jiu-jitsu but have jiu-jitsu. Used to have some days used to I know the gym I, I, I used to work uh, used to have jiu-jitsu but I know the days used to have MMA have box but now we just have jiu-jitsu just brief sleep eat just jiu-jitsu you know whatever that's one of my after after because every, everything have stages as well you know has the stages but after a while I start to, you know look how my team start to growing up how the guys start more passionate about to train, everybody want to train every day, everybody want to open mats, and then uh, I say, my next step
step is get a gym okay just full-time brazilian jiu-jitsu just full-time brazilian jiu-jitsu whatever day you come to the gym you walk the door have a jiu-jitsu class as a jiu-jitsu training if you can come in the morning you can have a, a jiu-jitsu class in the morning if you want to come out oh, i can come tuesday but wednesday we have class you know man so and i'm so happy about the place you know you know we still set up a lot of things to do you know it's just it's that's my like i say i open up i reopen my gym on tuesday so uh so thursday so that's the third class you know man but i'm not very accomplished you know man as a competitor as well you know man, i fought and i had the experience of the all the tournaments i even have tournaments i could even imagine you know and my students as well see my students progressing as well you know man. It's, it's amazing you know it's a really good feeling you know uh, and then most part of the guys are like this so that's my why now you know keeping my life is simple i like simple things you know health and you help my friends help the, my students i i know most say my students are my friends because they help me so much you know they help me uh, even for my competition my the, you know so it's just keep spread the jiu-jitsu the way you know or, or the way i like it because that's was my dream you know one day i dream myself in brazil remember uh, uh, i could pass this to my kids that's another thing I could pass this to my kids. So my son is 24 years old. He's a brown belt. He teaches in US. My other son is a blue belt. He come to stay a couple months in UK with me. So I could pass it from generations and generations, you know what I mean? Family and now friends, you know what I mean? Like Rafael. Rafael, he come, he come to train for me. He used to be 14 years old. You know, his mother used to call me to check if he left the gym, you know what I mean? I used to have to sign, you know, hey, Rafael. Uh, you know, you know. Now he's, he's a become a great person. You know, I mean, a professional guy as well. He he keep working on his way. You know, I mean, I sometimes I put his feet on the floor. Say, listen, bro, you have to keep working hard. You know, I mean? but you know, things like this. Him, Patrick as well. He used to be 13. Yeah, he used to be 13, and now they are brown belts. You know, what I mean, it's just grow up, become a good person. You know, what I mean, be away from crazy things outside the, you know outside the mat, you know what I mean? It's like a crazy lifestyle, you know what I mean? They just focus in training, be a, you know, be good, you know, become a professional, go to uni, you know, so that's my why, you know, I think, you know, and because like I say on day in Rio de Janeiro, years, years ago, I say on day I want to live from the sport. I just want to live from the sport. Sometimes, sometimes people say, ah, oh, you work too hard. Sometimes I say to myself, I'm working too hard because I teach in Southport as well. I do this, I do that. But say, oh, hold on a minute, hold on a minute. Back in 2003, when I was Papa belt, you know what I mean? That's I say, on day I want to live from the sport so it doesn't matter what now you teach i live from jiu-jitsu you are referee you are free from jiu-jitsu you are competitor you know what i mean so that's my why you know so i'm so happy you know.